It's time to make a showstopper of a dessert for our dinner party. It's super fruity and as light and fluffy as a cloud. And was originally made using the root of a plant. Was it? Yes, that's where it gets its name from, the marshmallow plant. And our guests are going to love it. This is our raspberry marshmallow. Some sweets are great for putting in your pocket and going for a nice walk in the woods. But there are some sweets so special and possibly made by angels that work really well as a pudding too. And this is one of them. First you need 300 grams of raspberries. Put about half of them into a pan. We're just going to make a little raspberry puree. Nothing flash, very simple. Add a couple of tablespoons of caster sugar. If you've got a punnet of squishy raspberries in your fridge that you want to get used up, this is the perfect way to use them. You're just going to let that sugar uh, dissolve a little bit, which is starting to do now really nicely. It smells like my childhood, actually. It, my mum was a big jam and marmalade maker, and it just, it just smells like really, really super fruity raspberry jam. Do you want to come and sieve my raspberries for me? Personally, I don't really like getting raspberry seeds in my teeth, so I think it's quite nice to try and take those raspberry seeds out if you can. Whilst Mr G sifts the raspberries, I'm going to get on with a marshmallow. In a heavy bottom pan, add 450 grams of granulated sugar and a tablespoon of lovely liquid glucose. It's always handy if you're using something like honey or treacle or liquid glucose. If you dip your spoon in hot water first, the glucose or whatever it is you're using will just slide straight off it. Am I dismissed? Are you done? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Then add 200 mils of water to the pan and pop it on the heat. So we're going to let the sugar dissolve into the water and we're going to get that glucose syrup bubbling away. Um, we're going to leave it for about 15 minutes until that happens. For the next part of the recipe, we'll need a mixer. As soon as it's reached 118 degrees, you need to get a couple of egg whites and start whisking them. In earnest, two egg whites, whisk them. So there's a bit of multitasking here. This is where it all gets a little bit exciting. Make sure your mixer bowl is clean and dry. If there's any grease in there, it can stop the egg whites from getting stiff. If your husband has not whisked the egg whites quickly enough, you can lift the pan off the heat to control it a little bit. When the sugar syrup reaches 127 degrees centigrade, take the thermometer out and add in four sheets of pre-soaked gelatin. Make sure to give them a really good squeeze to remove the excess water. It's going to froth up like crazy. Woohoo! The egg whites need to be whisked until just stiff. And then all you have to do is, in a very, very slow stream, pour the hot mixture onto the egg whites. The hot syrup will cook the egg whites. You want to whisk it on a moderate speed for a surprisingly long 15 minutes. Meanwhile, get a tin ready by lining it with baking parchment and sifting in equal amounts of icing sugar and corn flour. This will stop the marshmallow sticking to the parchment. After 15 minutes, your marshmallow should be lovely and thick and glossy. Ooh. That is just like the most beautiful marshmallow cloud. Scrape the marshmallow cloud off the whisk. So I'm going to take the raspberry puree that I made earlier. And we want to try and get this to be like a raspberry ripple ice cream. So you're not going to do loads and loads of mixing and get it all pink. We want this to ripple gently through the marshmallow. Spoon half the mixture into the bottom of the tin and then add a handful of the remaining raspberries. I do think there's something really rather lovely about making a sandwich, as it were. What you can see from the outside is a lovely ripply marshmallow, and then uh, the surprise is you've got the extra layer in the middle that you weren't expecting. Add the final layer of mallow and top with the rest of the raspberries. This is going to make the most gorgeous pudding later. If you don't want to make it as a pudding, of course, you can put it in a square tin and uh, cut it into squares. I'm going to leave that for half an hour to set, and when it's ready, I'm going to consider sharing it with my guests this evening. <laughs>